In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give us a king to govern us like all the nations. Thus we read in the sacred scriptures of how the monarchy was founded in Israel. Holy Samuel grew old, and the people wanted no more with judges, with the law handed down from Moses and God ruling directly as their king. They clamored to him, appoint for us a king to govern us like all the other nations. It displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to govern us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, hearken to the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but have rejected me from being king over them. Now then, hearken to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking a king from him. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen, to run before his chariots, He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his servants. He will take your men servants and maid servants and the best of your cattle and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your flocks, and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel, and they said, No, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may govern us, and go out before us and fight our battles. The people of Israel wanted safety, no matter the price. And all indeed did come to pass, as the Lord had foretold through Samuel. The people were taxed by their king for war and treasure. Their men sent out to die and their women to serve at his whim. A king like other nations was precisely what they got. For although they sometimes had one who was good and righteous, most often they had one greedy for power and unspeakably vicious. And as they rejected God as their king, so they soon rejected God as their God. Like a perpetual refrain we hear throughout the books of kings, every time a new ruler ascends to power, And he was a bad king and did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He sinned and made all Israel to sin. By this it does not mean that he twisted their arms, that he forced them to perform sinful actions, rather that he led by example. This always referred to the erection of idols in the land, the root of all other vices, The first punishment was that the kingdom was divided in two, into Israel and Judah, and the ambitious power struggles multiplied. If the kings of Israel and Judah rejected the Lord and served the false gods of the neighboring countries and taught their people to do likewise, there was nothing left but for God to give them over into the hands of those neighbors, to be ruled by the succession of cruel empires depicted in the prophecy of Daniel, the Babylonian, Persian, Greek, and Roman empires. It was under this final empire of iron and clay that the true king and successor of David would finally appear. At long last, Israel would have both God and man 
as king in the person of Jesus Christ. Yet Christ the king did not come to deliver the Jews from political domination and found a worldly empire. Before he was crowned with thorns and placed on the throne of the cross, he declared to Pilate, My kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom would be in this world, but not of it. He came to found a perfect society with a divine constitution, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, drawing people from all nations. Christ our King has indeed gone out before us to fight our battles, but the kingdom of Christ has never promised safety. It is here to bring salvation. It brings grace through the kingship won by Christ on the cross 2,000 years ago and made present to us through the sacraments. Through grace, our King, risen from the dead, is the firstborn among many brethren, and all his subjects are adopted into his family and become partakers themselves of the divine nature. And if this kingdom guarantees no earthly safety, neither does it demand subjection. It preaches, rather, repentance. Our king declares he who sins is the slave of sin. Embrace the truth of the gospel, which alone can make you free. And it is not a kingdom of tyranny and cruel human justice, but of mercy. For our King, before whom every knee must one day bend in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, has loved us with an everlasting love. And any man, though he be scarlet with the most abominable sins, provided he turn from the path of darkness, may receive a royal welcome with snow-white garments in this kingdom. On the eve of another electoral cycle, as we prepare for our prudential participation in the electoral process of yet one more worldly power, which is here today and gone tomorrow, we are tempted to ask, what has become of this kingdom? Can it be that the new Israel, like the old, has now rejected her divine king. Does she now want to be an earthly ruler so that she can be like all other nations? Is the very man entrusted with the sacred office of viceroy to the king now all too eager to lay aside his title of vicar of Christ and declare himself a worldly ruler in his own right, with his own court, his own law, his own gospel, Never. It shall not be. The gospel of Christ is a gospel of grace, repentance, and mercy. It can never be replaced by a gospel of environment, change, and free love. With Christ as our King, all things are possible. With man as King, all things are permissible. What need have any of us of the religion of man? Christ our King alone has the words of eternal life. What good is a priest who lays aside the sacraments of Christ to be a mere guidance counselor? What good is a bishop who lays aside the apostolic succession to be a mere facilitator? What good is a pope who lays aside the keys to the kingdom of heaven and tells men they should not feel judged for choosing the wide road that leadeth to destruction. O oh, Simon Peter, truly the words of thy master are fulfilled. Truly Satan now desires to have us, that he might sift us as wheat. We pray for thee that thy faith fail not. Be converted and confirm thy brethren. For we want no king but Christ. O royal heart of Jesus, though princes of state and even of church reject thee, 
yet we do not. We will have none but thee to rule in our hearts, our homes, our nation. In this our darkest hour, we know that thou, O Lion of Judah, art on the move. The wrath of the dragon knows no bounds, for he knows his time is short. The man of sin, the son of perdition, may well be revealed in his time, whose coming is according to the working of Satan in all powers, signs, and lying wonders. But thou, Lord Jesus, shalt kill him with the spirit of thy mouth and destroy him with the brightness of thy coming. Royal heart of Jesus, thy kingdom come through the immaculate heart of Mary. Amen.